Greetings everyone, Mike with Spray Jones and I'm bringing to you another video on spray foam and today the topic is going to be six places in your home that need spray foam and why. So let's get into it. Item number one is going to be the most popular, floor joists. Now what are we talking about? The floor joist is a system of wood to hold up the floor above and it's going to be divided into two parts which is the ends of the joist and then the perimeter sides which are called the rims and they can be solid they can be made out of 2 by 8 2 by 10 or they can be pre-engineered such as a TJI system which stands for trust joist or I joist or they can be an open web wood joist like you're seeing here the difficulty with this system is to cut the poly and the plastic and to form it around all of the uh, obstructions that are there. It is the connection at the foundation and therefore it is a weak point. This is where your perimeter, your belting around the house meets the foundation. So it's high rate of air leakage which means moisture buildup, which means the wood can start to rot and that means cold floors, building degradation. So. A lot of times what we're asked to do is come in and put a liquid applied foam and this solves the problem. It attaches to the concrete, attaches to the wood, and it deals with all the penetrations of electrical and HVAC systems and water spigots that are going through the outside. It seals the top of the foundation. This is very important. You can see this in this picture here, how the top of the concrete needs to be sealed as well. And it is bonded to the system, so it's adding an immense amount of laminated structural support, which means as a unit, the rim, the joist end, and the floor above all become one tied together glued piece. So you have an air seal, you have insulation, you have structure, and you have the ability to cope and deal with difficult penetrations. Area number two is floors over top of cold spaces. So this could be a floor off of a main level, second level, third level, where cold is beneath it, it is unheated. That could be uh, a bedroom that is over top of a garage. It could be a bay window or some sort of a floor extension for a bathroom, a cantilevered area. And in these situations, the cold and the gravity is a real enemy, along with air leakage. So the care that we bring is spray foam, spray to the underside of the floor. There's two ways to go about doing this. One is we spray directly to the floor, encapsulate the floor in three, four, even sometimes as much as five inches of closed cell foam, spray direct to the floor, encapsulating ductwork, they're good to go. The second way is to do a cross ventilated, ventilated side where hot air is coming between the spray foam and the floor above and I actually prefer this method because it gives a chance for all ductwork, all plumbing, all transitions to be kept inside of a warm area. It requires extra steps to be taken with the spray foam installer but it provides for a very good product at the end and with this we can have no more air leakage, no more water coming out and it makes living space over top of unheated cold space very very uh, doable. Number three, basement walls. If you have a wood basement then for sure you need to be looking at spray foam to seal up all of the joints and all of the transitions but concrete in the ground is absolutely made for spray foam because concrete allows moisture to pass through. It's very porous. We try to put membranes and sealants on the outside and the inside but if we're going to try to use something to stop the water then we should be using spray foam because the first step is to get away from the, the concrete being so porous and this is where spray foam comes into play. It will bond to the concrete, it seals the cracks, it stops the moisture just like cork in a bottle. So the spray foam forms a shell on the inside and now you do not have a moisture problem between your insulation and your concrete walls and this is what makes that cold damp feeling and the foam is going to form around irregular shapes such as seams in the forms and any penetrations that are going through to the outside of the walls such as ductwork, hoods to the outside, uh, water spigots, around windows, 
around any type of um, gas meter or gas pipeline that's having to come through. It's going to create the basement to be warm and dry. And usually we see uh, basements that have been sprayed pick up anywhere between 2 to 3 degrees Celsius. And this is like anything that you've ever experienced before. So you want to take a hard long look at getting spray foam in the basement because 40% of your overall consumption goes towards that basement until it's properly and well sealed. Number four, crawl spaces. No one wants to be in a crawl space except bugs, mice, and cold. People come to us asking if, if they remove the fiberglass insulation, could we come and get the spray foam put in? And my answer is always yes, provided that the crawl space is high enough for us to get into. The reason why? They've had cold floors. They've had the mice running through the insulation through their house. They've had the bugs and the infestations and the, the camel crickets get into things and they've seen that it doesn't work. This is an absolute area where glass fiber and poly cannot and should not be used. So get it removed, get it dried out because these spaces are habitually wet in cold weather climates. Bring in the spray foam and whether it's concrete walls or wood walls, get them sprayed. You're not going to be putting drywall down in these spaces, so you have the luxury of rolling the foam over top of transitions and seams and getting everything fully encapsulated. If it's a heated space, this works perfectly. Treat it like a short little basement. The floors uh, can now warm up with the air that's circulating in there. The space can finally get warm, get dry, and you get comfortable. If it is actually going to be a cold crawl space, uh, then I suggest that you treat it as a floor over a cold zone, spraying the ductwork, spraying the underside of the floor above, and that means possibly doing a drop-down design like we've covered in the uh, bonus room and, and floors area. But in every single situation, when the spray foam is sprayed properly and consistently, it's going to seal the entrances that the bugs and the mice use to get in. It's going to lock in the warmth stop the air movement, stop the moisture movement, and it's going to solve all of the issues you've ever had with a crawl space in one shot. Number five, vaulted ceilings. Vaulted ceilings are perfect for spray foam because they have limited space for insulation and venting. So why don't you go new and ditch the ventilation altogether? How we do this is spray foam goes directly to the underside of the roof and we end up sealing from the peak all the way to the rafter heels as one continuous piece. We build up the foam thickness between joists or trusts and maximize the amount of insulation that we can get in there. Because we have a higher insulation value per inch, we don't need as much physical space in order to reach great levels. The more room that you have in the joist cavity, then you have more additional space for pot lights or speakers or different architectural details. There is no need for airflow with spray foam. You're not letting air go through the product. You're not letting water go through it. There's going to be no slumping or settling of the insulation and it's not going to get wet. So when you have these factors dealt with and mitigated, then you don't need to have ventilation. It is uh, not an issue to have confined space. So pinch points towards a rafter heel, towards a transition in a valley. Spray foam can take care of all of this and not be dealing with trying to get 8 or 10 or 12 inches of insulation into a space where you only have 4 or 5 due to transition and framing and blocking. This is why you want to go foam. You don't have to figure out how to get cross ventilation into things unless you're trying to mix old with new and it adds structural support to the underside of the roof deck meaning rafter twist Rafter uplift, this is when you have extreme hot or cold temperature variance between the upper cord and the lower cord. It also frees up design choices. I've seen a lot of ceilings where they have had um, bulkheads, they've had all sorts of coffers built into them, and it's going to be a nightmare to poly and bat and try to incorporate blow in all into one piece. Instead, you put the spray foam to the underside of the roof deck, and your drywall ceiling is much like a suspended ceiling in the sense that it's not needed anymore to support insulation. And then this all removes the issues for installation problems where somebody has 
They've been working in a tight spot. It's been blind. They can't see with the spray foam to the underside of the roof. You can see everything, verify everything with a thermal camera, leave the drywall off for months, weeks, or years if you want, verify everything has been done correctly, and then close everything up. I've been doing these for 15 years, and we've had total success on the vaulted ceiling system. Item number six, two by four walls. Retrofitting uh, two by four walls is an excellent, excellent use of spray foam. So anything built between 1900 to circa 1980 is usually gonna have a two by four construction. This is means that you are limited in space for insulation, obviously. Most homes and buildings from 1900 to 1970 had no vapor barrier. It's only since 1995 that we've seen better specifications come along and better and better vapor barriers. But that still means that 2x4 is usually frosty, cold, drafty, and they have moisture problems. I've even seen 2x4 walls from the 70s where towels or blankets or pillows will freeze to the outside walls. So this is why you want to upgrade to either two or three inches of foam in a two by four wall. In 15 years of business, I've done thousands of residences. And most of those places have anywhere from an inch and a half to two and a half inches. And every single time the homeowners have been absolutely amazed. They go from having a cold space to being warm. I've even done retrofit commercial buildings. I did uh, a public library that was in a commercial building with that was all two by four and we just did it with two inches of foam and the building was in such poor shape before we were there it was just it was night and day you know you could see daylight coming through things you'll take things from drafty to sealed and really you're taking things from old-fashioned to modern so if you have an old home built in the 1920s 1930s 1950s you want to keep the old home the old character the old charm and the old neighborhood that you're living in but you want something modern this is exactly how you want to go you want to have iPad Android technology in the walls and that means open up the wall either either from the outside or the inside and pull the old insulation the old bad insulation out and retrofit it with again inch and a half to two inches of spray foam and this means that you're gonna have a warm home and no you cannot do foam injection foam injection is going to bow and buckle things and you're not going to be assured where you can get the spray foam in so you want to have your walls completely open see what's going on pull the old insulation out upgrade any wiring or plumbing in the wall at that time double check on structure that things aren't twisting on you and then Lastly, put the spray foam in. You're never going to regret it. It's going to sell itself to all of your friends uh, as they see how warm and comfortable your home is in. And that's number six. So thank you for tuning in. Thank you for hitting the like button, the subscribe button. Tune in for many more informative videos like this one.